Hi, this is Ryan Neal from the USA offices of Neal Saddlery and Harness Cowboy Sewing Machines and High Tech Sewing Machines. We're going to continue our video series for service and operation on our CB4500 sewing machine by describing to you uh, the oil points on the sewing machine as well as how frequently to oil the sewing machine and how much oil you should use. As a general rule of thumb on the sewing machine, if it sits for a period of time, a large period of inactivity, for instance, if you were to go two or three weeks without utilizing the machine, it's a very good idea to go ahead and clean and lubricate the machine prior to use. Um, generally, the amount of time um, involved in, um, if you were to run the sewing machine for continuous use, in other words, if you were running it for four or five or six hours, we usually recommend putting a couple of drops of oil in. Um, you know, every, every, after every couple hours of operation. So um, again, to show you where the lubrication points are on this sewing machine, what you would basically um, do is anywhere where you see a red dot in the casting, that's generally a good place to add oil. And these, these red dots are indicated all along the uh, top of the sewing machine as well as some on the back and the sides. And I will show you where those are at momentarily. The type of oil that we like to use on this sewing machine is a non-staining paraffinic based oil. Um, generally, Juki Defrix oil is a good choice to use. Um, Lily White sewing machine oil is also a good choice. Um, the, where, I would like to, where we usually like to oil the sewing machine to start off with is right here, which is in between the flywheel and the bushing on the sewing machine. And what you want to do is just put a couple of drops of oil between the cast iron flywheel and the bushing on the side of the sewing machine. That usually uh, stops excess friction from building up between the flywheel and the casting on the sewing machine. The next place we like to oil is along the top of the sewing machine. That would be here, 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 here as well as the red dots that are indicated here, 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 and here. Then um, there are some lubrication points on the back side of the sewing machine which aren't quite as, quite as conspicuous and they would be for instance this red dot that's right here on the, on the journal that holds the, the long shaft that runs all the way across the back of the sewing machine. And then I also like to lubricate between this uh, shaft collar and this shaft collar on the sewing machine, put a couple of drops of oil there. Um, um, on the um, presser foot um, armature assembly here on the back of the sewing machine, I also like to add a drop of oil right here, as well as a drop of oil right here. I also like to add an oil, uh, a few drops of oil right here. You can see that there's a small hole in the casting on, on this particular part on this crankshaft for the sewing machine. I like to add a few drops of oil there. I also like to oil back here um, where this red dot is, and again uh, here and here where the bushings run through the, uh, where the, where the shaft runs through the bushings on the sewing machine. Then you can also see that there's a, a small hole right here that I, in addition to, like to add oil to as well. Um, under, on the front side of the sewing machine, and I'll have the camera come around on the front side of the sewing machine, there is a red hole that is right here. We like to oil that hole as well. There's also red holes right here and a red hole right here that we do provide lubrication for. There's also a small hole right here on the slide plate where the material guide, near where the material guide would mount on the sewing machine that we do like to include oil with. There's also a small hole right here that we do put a few drops of oil down in as well. Every once in a while, it wouldn't hurt to take the front cover off the sewing machine. And I'm gonna come over here and grab a screwdriver so I can take the cover off so that you can see um, that you would need uh, that there are some lubrication points that are inside the sewing machine as well and so when you remove the front cover you just there's a screw in the upper right hand position a screw in the lower left hand position and what you'll do is just uh, remove those screws now when you do take the front cover off the sewing machine you want to make sure you grab a hold of the cover so that it doesn't fall off the front of the sewing machine when the cover is removed And so now you can see I've got the cover separated from the body of the sewing machine. And so now the front cover is removed. And so there are some lubrication points that are inside the sewing machine. Usually I like to put a few drops of oil on this threaded rod that controls the presser foot tension as well as in the hole right here um, where the presser foot bar goes up and down through the hole. Then I also like to put a few drops of oil along this spring right here so that it slides up and down smoothly against the presser foot bar itself. 
I also like to put a few drops of oil on this wheel assembly right here. I also like to put a few drops of oil back behind here where the block assembly fits into the casting housing. Then if you'll notice on these pieces right here, there are small holes here, here, and here. I like to put a few drops of oil in those holes as well as a little bit of oil right here where this, uh, where this bell crank rides against the, the front casting or the, the front block piece on the sewing machine. Then there are additional oil, po oil points down here which I do like to put a few drops of oil in here. I also like to put a few drops of oil in this hole right here as well. Then finally I like to put a few drops of oil where the presser foot bar and the inside presser foot bar come through the casting as well as the needle bar. Just put a few drops of oil here on the base of this uh, at the base of the casting. There's one other place that I like to oil which is this slide assembly right here. I'll put a few drops of oil here and a few drops of oil here as well. That makes sure that the that the inside presser foot bar is well lubricated on the sewing machine. Now usually what we recommend doing is oiling this sewing machine at the end of every day so that when you come in the next morning that the excess oil will have leached down through the sewing machine and you'll probably see a few drops of oil on your stand and maybe a puddle of oil where your presser where your presser foot hits against the needle plate here then you can simply take a, a paper towel and wipe that off and then you can also take a paper towel and sew it through the sewing machine actually go make making stitches in the paper towel just fold it over three or four times run it through the sewing machine and then you can actually sew on the paper towel and then that way um, it, it, it wicks off the excess oil from down underneath. Now there is one final area to lubricate on the sewing machine and this is very important. The reason why I chose it as the last place to indicate is because it, it requires more frequent lubrication than any of the other places on the sewing machine. And this would be the shuttle hook area right here. And the best thing to do is about after every second or third bobbin change we recommend putting a couple of drops of oil right here and so what will happen is um, as the sewing machine begins to run you'll see that the hook will circulate the oil throughout the entire shuttle race so just by placing a couple of drops of sewing machine oil right here you'll see that the hook will start to, to circulate the oil throughout the, the shuttle race and then you'll get a very nice even distribution of lubricant. So um, this would give you the, a rough idea as far as the different points to lubricate on the sewing machine. And um, one other thing I'd like to talk about too is when we go to install the front cover back on the sewing machine, you'll see that there's a small tab on the back cover right here, um, a cutout that's in the, in the finger that's used to split the discs apart. And when you go to install that back on the sewing machine, you want to make sure that the the uh, small cutout right here lines up with the small nipple that's on the back side of the casting right here, so or on the back side of the aperture right here, so that when we put it on, it fits on just like this. And so basically, what that'll do for you is that you'll make sure that uh, that the uh, presser foot lifter lever will work properly and split those discs apart during the operation of the sewing machine, especially when you're taking material out of the sewing machine. So then we, we, we just install the cover back with the, uh, you know, with, the, with a couple of um, the, these two screws here as well as the screwdriver, use, utilizing the screwdriver to do so. so. Um, this would give you a rough idea about how to lubricate this sewing machine as well as the frequency of lubrication on it. Um, and again, if you should um, have any questions on the sewing machine or how to operate the sewing machine or if you would like to purchase the sewing machine, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, my name again is Ryan Neal from Neal Saddlery and Harness Cowboy Sewing Machines. I can be reached at area code 330-692-1418 and I thank you for your time today.